Hello again! Welcome to another Anachronism Sunday. Today we have Apranik. Um, she is a Persian warrior, female. I never heard of her, but apparently she she is a Persian. So yeah, let's learn from the cards, just like before with the Turks. Um, just look at the grid. Um, first of all, on the side to the left, plus zero. On top of that, we have plus one. In front of her, minus one. The next one on the right, a plus two. Six health, three speed, seven experience, and one strength. All right, her ability, Jang Joy E Azadi. Uh, at the start of each round, roll two dice. If the if this roll is odd, gain one life. If the roll is doubles, your next attack is a critical hit if it hits. Cool. Okay, so she is the daughter of the old, of the mighty general Piran. Apranik rose through the ranks of the army on pure merit to become one of the most fearsome, cunning and dedicated Sasanian army commanders. So, alright, so she was in the army and she was a woman. So, does that mean that the Persians didn't discriminate based on sex. Hmm, you would assume that, wouldn't you? All right, her inspiration is the Persian deity Anahita, and you can see they covered up her boob quite cleverly with a pretty little dove. All right, um, the ancient Persian goddess of water, fertility, and war, as well as the patroness, uh, uh, as well as the patron goddess of women. Anahita embodied every aspect of womanhood, from gentle mother to lethal warrior. Again, a woman as a lethal warrior. Did they accept them as equals? That is what I want to know right now. That would be pretty awesome if they did. Um, bar -e is but is a reveal ability. If you lost the previous game, or if an opponent discarded one of your cards this game, you may deal one damage to your warrior. Huh? Oh, okay. If you do, for the rest of the game, your first weapon attack of each round deals plus one damage. Oh, that's cool. And she has six initiative. Next up, a weapon. A knife. Akinaka. It is three inspiration, two strength. Oh no, the card is damaged. And on the grid we see a plus zero in front, a plus zero next to it, and on the other side next to it a minus three. The ability Dugardeshi, you may use another weapon this turn. Yeah, you see this ability a lot with knives, small handed small hander weapons, uh, that you may use another weapon. That is quite good. That is quite nice. Um, originally of Scythian design, the Persians made extensive use of this wickedly sharp two-edged dagger. Used as a thrusting weapon, it was typically drawn with the blade facing down. To be used in a stabbing motion. Next up, Tiara. It is a headpiece armor. So that is where the name Tiara comes from. Um, we now see it as a pageant display item. But yeah, this is apparently what a Tiara was. Uh, or still is, if it is still used by those people. I think it is. Uh, inspiration of four. And the ability, Barkasht, is an action. Make a basic attack at plus one into any space in any of your non-ranged weapon attack grids. Hmm. Alright, I don't see what that has to do with armor. Or can she just take off the head pan, the head cloth, the, the cloth headpiece and just swing it like a whip? That would be cool. Alright, the many folds of this cloth headpiece provided protection against slashing weapons as well as the searing rays of the Persian sun yes which is a completely different sun than any other all right and finally we have a special an ability this time Jang Ogoris um, yeah we see a palace burning and they were and they are fleeing in the night all right Hamle Ye Yaheshi is a reveal ability. Choose an opponent at the start of your turn and the end of the chosen opponent's turn 
make a basic or weapon attack against each opposing warrior at the largest bonus in that attack's grid. These attacks cannot gain damage bonuses. You can take no other actions this round. Hmm. Okay, that could be... No, that's... Well, you cannot take any other actions anymore. What is the point of that? Hmm. All right. Oh, wait, it's for the next turn then. Right. Uh, despite the success of Arab invaders, Apranik defiantly refused to surrender her homeland. Uh, she waged a relentless guerrilla war, securing her place as a symbol of Persian freedom. Is she still known to Persians, is my question. Is she still a symbol of Persian freedom? Well, of course, Persia doesn't exist anymore. But do the people who now live in the old lands of Persia still see her as a symbol of freedom? Please answer me that. Thank you all for watching. This was Apranik, the female warrior. See you all next time. Bye.